Head Tyrolia proudly present Ski Press Weekly News with Amy Quigley. Welcome to Ski Press Weekly News with Amy Quigley, your number one source for winter sports news from around the world. Hi, I'm Amy Quigley with the Ski Press Weekly News. We'll start this week with a bit of an opening update. In the east, the weather's been anything but cold since Thanksgiving. Fortunately, cool temps prior to the holiday allowed for ample snowmaking at many northeastern resorts. The end result was season openings at spots like Vermont Sugarbush, where the lifts ran for the first time on Thanksgiving Eve. If you're planning on hitting the resort, the snow can be found on Mount Ellen. Now on the west coast, cold temperatures and snow don't seem to be the issue. The Lake Tahoe region is welcoming in the season. Heavenly opened on Friday the 25th. It was the first of the Ski Lake Tahoe resorts to open for this season. Next came Kirkwood and North Star. Following the openings, a storm hit the resorts, dumping about a foot of snow on the slopes. The powder should help skiers and riders enjoy conditions like the ones we're looking at in the coming weeks. For those of you who watched Monday Night Football this week, you saw the snow falling in Seattle. It's a city known for its precipitation, but it's not common to see the snow line dropping down to sea level in the Pacific Northwest. However, this seems to be the general trend these days in the region. For instance, Oregon's Mount Hood Ski Bowl is having a stellar opening. During the Thanksgiving holiday weekend, the mountain received several feet of snow, and Timberline Ski Area received 30 inches over the weekend. The base total at the lodge is 79 inches, in other words, more than six feet, and the season is just beginning. And in ski racing news, it may be a great start to the season out west, but unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the U.S. Alpine teams. In last weekend's Aspen-based Women's World Cup giant slalom, Lindsay Kildow took the top U.S. honors with a seventh place finish. In the slalom event, Kildow was again the number one U.S. finisher with a 16th place finish. Julia Mancuso took the 22nd spot and Rizzi Stigler the 25th. The one-two podium positions look like a repeat of the Finnish-based slalom event a few weeks back where the Austrians were first and second there as well. In men's racing news, the U.S. Braves sub-zero temperatures to ski in Lake Louise for the Super G last weekend. Unfortunately, the U.S. men did not fare so well either. Bodie Miller had the top U.S. result where he placed 14th and Steve Nyman landed in a tie for 17th. The winner of the event was a big surprise. Canadian John Kusura was the first Canadian to win a World Cup Super G since 1988. And to make the victory even sweeter, he was the first Canadian to win a World Cup on home turf since 1989. The World Cup season is now in full swing and it's in the States this weekend where the men are gracing the slopes of Colorado's Beaver Creek. If you follow World Cup snowboarding events at all, the name Gretchen Blyler may ring a bell. She won the silver in Torino last season and this year she's starting out very well. Blyler along with teammate Scotty Lago had a good Thanksgiving when they both won the Swiss-based World Cup halfpipe events. They'll be stateside in about two weeks when they hit the slopes of Breckenridge, Colorado for the Chevrolet U.S. Snowboard Grand Prix. It starts on December 13th. And that about wraps up the happenings in snow country for this week. Get out there and enjoy the early season. And until next time, we'll see you on the slopes. Thanks for watching. And for more information, log on to SkiPressWorld.com, your number one source for global snow culture. Head Tyrolia proudly present Ski Press Weekly News with Amy Quigley.